everybody out there, Benedict back here again today. I'm back with a lesson and that's a pretty cool one, at least that's, that's the way I think. What to do if your guitar doesn't or doesn't have a whammy, whammy bar or vibrato, whatever you may call it. So for example, this one doesn't and there are lots of reasons why you don't or wouldn't want to have a whammy on your guitar. There's the string break issue, your guitar goes out of tune and string winding up on there, it's like changing strings is a hassle too. So there are lots of reasons to stick with the guitar without a trem, but what to do if you, do, if you want to do some whammy tricks. So let me show you a couple of cool tricks and here we go. First one is the <laughs> infamous neck bend and here we go. Just at least I think I wouldn't go any further than a half step up or down, otherwise you may risk <laughs> breaking your guitar neck. So let's drop it down half a step. <laughs> It's as simple as it looks, just grab your neck, other hand is up here at the horn in this case and just like squeeze the guitar, bend the neck against the body. Once more. Of course you can do it the other way around and then you'll have to push, uh, pull the neck towards you and So if you do it gentle, like I'm doing it, and just a half step, you should be pretty, pretty safe, so no neck breakage. Then next trick is the bending behind the nut thing, which is pretty cool as well. You might have heard from Jimmy Page and countless others. Lots of country players do it and there are a couple of ways of doing it. A couple of ways of doing it. You can do it either with the right hand or with the left hand. Kind of depends on what you're actually doing. So for instance, if you're <clears throat> playing like a triller in your pentatonic, so like this. What you would do with your whammy is like bend it up, for example. You can do that as well by get your thumb, put it up on the G string, and then all you have to do is press, press down on it. Pretty cool. And then you can also do it with your fretting hand. For example, if you're down there and imagine you would like to play an E major chord, but you want to raise your open G string to the fretted note to, to the G sharp. So you want to hear this. And you can bend up there by actually leaving the G string open and then bending with your index finger and the nut. So here I'm going from a E minor to an E major chord. But I'm bending it. You could also do like a E major to an E sus4 chord, so you would hear that. E major, E sus4. Sus only means like you're, you're changing out the third, your T-sharp to your fourth. So and by bending, you press your normal E major and then... Pretty cool as well. Then the other thing that's, that's kind of like gets forgotten a lot is like the pre-bend. I think most people don't think about it because they lots of people do it automatically and don't even think about using it as a as a tool by itself. And pre-bending only means you're bending your string and then you're hitting it with a pick. So for instance, if I'm bending my D here, G string seventh fret. <laughs> That would be a normal bend, but if I pre-bend, sounds like that. You bend up, you pluck, and then you slowly release the tension. And then you can bend up again. Like for instance, if you would play it with a guitar with a vibrato on it, you would 
pluck the string, press the bar and then raise it up again. On a guitar without a bar, it's like that. You can not only do that with single notes, but you can also do it with, with chords actually. So for instance, um, let's say 7th fret, G, B string, bend those two strings up and then release them. That might take some practice, bending two strings at once simultaneously. It's a little tricky, but you can get the hang of it pretty, 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 far, pretty fast. Um, the next one is actually a combination of bending and tapping. So, for instance, let's stay in the key of A. Pluck your string, then you actually tap. You slide up to your 19th fret, then you bend it up, release it with your right hand, and then release the bend. Sounds complicated, let's... I, just, I think it's easier if you listen to it and take a look. Once more, a little slower. Once more, a little faster so you can hear it better. Yeah, that's our, these are a couple of tricks you can use to imitate guitar with a vibrato without actually having one. So, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts. Do you have any more tricks? Maybe you do, because I don't know all of it. <laughs> so, write it down in the comments, hit the bell icon and we see each other on Facebook and Instagram. Till next time, bye-bye!